Glucose breath testing is a very popular way to try to diagnose SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And beyond the accuracy issues, which I'll talk about in a future video, as well as accuracy issues with the lactulose-based breath test for SIBO, I actually have some pretty major concerns that glucose-based breath testing might not be safe for a lot of us. And I'll share a little bit of a personal story at the end of this video, but let's get into the three situations where glucose breath testing might be dangerous or harmful to your health. First, briefly for like 20 seconds, for those of you who maybe don't know this, glucose breath testing, what ends up happening is that the person does a baseline breath sample where you breathe into the tube or the bag, then you drink a sugar solution with the glucose, pure unadulterated glucose that you mix with water, and you drink that down, and then every 15 or 20 minutes, you're gonna collect another breath sample for usually the duration of about two hours. And the idea is that the glucose will feed some of the bacteria if you have SIBO, and you will get a peak in gas production in a window of time that we think is indicative of SIBO versus colonic bacterial fermentation. Now, again, there are accuracy issues with both of these tests, both glucose and lactulose, but I actually am gonna talk more about glucose here because that's the one that I think is overtly dangerous for some people. And I'm not alone in my opinion on this. Now, being that I just told you, you drink a whole bunch of unadulterated pure glucose and then you do a breath sample, that also means that you cannot eat for the two hours after ingesting that glucose and you have to be fasting other than the glucose you just ingested for the duration of this test. So the first two situations where this can be really dangerous to do, and I would recommend doing lactulose or a different substrate instead, or skipping the test altogether, the first two of three that I'm gonna talk about have to do with blood sugar. So let's take a for instance, and let's talk about a well-balanced meal. So let's say you sit down and you have dinner and you've got some protein, some complex carbs, some fiber, some colors, you've got fruits, you've got vegetables, you've got healthy fats, you've got it all on this plate. And you sit down and you have this meal. What should happen for your blood sugar is that maybe you start out at the lower end of the good range. So maybe your fasting glucose in that case is like, let's say 80 nanograms per deciliter. You start out with a lower end of the healthy range fasting glucose, you ingest that nice, well-balanced meal, and you should get a nice rise in your blood sugar, and it'll kind, of, it'll kind of look like that, right? So you definitely get a rise, you get a bump in the blood sugar, but if it's well-balanced and you're handling glucose well, it shouldn't ever peak into the high zone, and you just get a nice little, a, a nice little hill, comes back down to your normal fasting level, and then it continues at that level until you eat again. So that would be with a meal. Let's see. Now let's take another meal, for example, and let's say you sit down and your meal is two donuts, a Sprite, and a cookie. Or heck, let's just say two donuts. I mean, that's enough to do it, right? We don't even have to make this exaggerated and, and out of the ordinary. So similarly, maybe you st start off with a decent blood sugar level, cruising along at the same level. And then when you ingest all of that sugar, your blood sugar is most likely going to careen much higher and it's going to almost certainly peak in this high zone somewhere. And then the key here is that it comes crashing and burning back down to planet Earth. And now you have glucose that crashes and burns. And oftentimes this high swing will even send your blood sugar crashing down into the low blood sugar or hypoglycemic range until finally you're able to recover. And then you hopefully are gonna maintain that, that good fasting blood sugar until your next meal. So you get the worst of both worlds when you eat a lot of sugar. You get this high, high peak, and then you get the crash and burn. You get the nosedive afterward. And that, my friends, is where the two conditions come into play. So glucose-based breath testing is overtly contraindicated meaning like doctors should know this and they should not be ordering these tests in these people. These tests are directly contraindicated for people who have hyperglycemia. Oh, look, I'm trying to multitask and I couldn't spell H-Y-P-E-R. 
hyperglycemia, and diabetes. Right? Because these are, this is a group of people who already have higher blood sugar, and they cannot risk sending their blood sugar up to the moon. So this is, this is one world where this is absolutely contraindicated. And I do find when I work with people who have diabetes, whether it be type 1 or type 2, generally speaking, I don't think they're getting a lot of glucose-based tests, which is good. I'll take that for what it is. However, what I see happen all the dang time in both the conventional sphere and the functional or naturopathic sphere is I see a lot of people who already dip way too low into this hyper hypoglycemic range all on their own without any assistance. They dip into this hypo range and then you give them a whole ton of sugar. They get this peak really high, just like the rest of us. Maybe it's a little bit lower than some of us, but the hypoglycemics will still get a really sharp incline at a peak and then crash and burn. And the difference is with a hypoglycemic, instead of this, their crash and burn might go even lower and be very dangerous. And again, I see this all the time. Well-meaning naturopaths and functional doctors and GI doctors who give people a glucose-based breath test, even though they have a very clear history of hypoglycemic symptoms, or even in situations where the patient has told the doctor, is this okay? I tend to get hypoglycemic really easily. And they just ignore the person for some reason and it drives me bonkers. If you have hypoglycemia or if you have a tendency to become hypoglycemic really easily, I would absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, skip the glucose breath test because it's gonna do this to you and you're gonna feel like crap. So again, I'll put an X over here hypoglycemia. Now, you might be wondering, well, what are some of the symptoms of hypoglycemia? Um, they tend to be people who get really weak or dizzy or like lightheaded or really like mentally foggy and not there if they haven't eaten for a while. Like if you haven't eaten in three, four, five, six hours, and you start to feel not like yourself, kind of like in those stupid Snickers bar commercials where the person's like, oh, you're not yourself. Here, man, have a Snickers. As a side note, I don't recommend Snickers for this purpose, but um, it's those sorts of symptoms typically is like the longer you go without eating, the worse you feel, or you just feel like absolute garbage. Um, the hallmark oftentimes for hyperglycemia is that you feel really terrible after you have a lot of carbs or a lot of sugar. So like you'll eat the donuts and then you feel like absolute rubbish afterwards. That's a little bit more hallmark for those folks. Um, so again, hyper and hypo, either way I wouldn't recommend. The third thing that I want to point out to you guys that I think is very dangerous with, with regards to the glucose-based testing is if you have known candida overgrowth or yeast overgrowth, or if you have a strong suspicion that you have candida, I would also skip the glucose-based test. Candida loves glucose. It doesn't really care as much about fructose and it really doesn't care about lactulose. So you could, you could throw that into the GI tract and the candida that you have probably wouldn't care. But if you have any sort of predilection towards candida overgrowth or yeast overgrowth or vaginal yeast infections or thrush or any sort of like candidiasis symptoms, you don't want to feed it its favorite food. <laughs> let alone in the quantity that you need to take for these breath tests. It is a truly outrageous, outrageous amount of glucose that you use for this test. So my big three, hyperglycemia slash diabetes, hypoglycemia, and uh, yeast overgrowth or candida overgrowth. These are the three conditions or the three symptoms that you want to use as a warning and steer clear of glucose-based breath testing. I would either skip it altogether or maybe opt for lactulose instead. Again, it's not without its flaws, but at least it's going to be safer and it's not going to send your blood sugar into a dang tailspin. Now for a little, uh, a little extra spice on the, the cake that I just presented to you is my own personal story. So if you go back in the archives of this channel quite a bit now, this was at the very, very beginning of 2020, like February, March, right at the beginning of lockdown, I did a video for this channel demonstrating how to do a breath test. And I actually did one. I ordered one on myself. I sent it into the lab. I got the results. It was negative, by the way. But I did a glucose breath test for you guys, and I posted it here on YouTube. 
Um, not my finest editing. It was probably a little bit long and boring if I'm going to admit it, but um, the point is I did this. And so what happened was I ordered this test and I decided to do it at my office because as some of you know, if you have a young child at home and you're trying to do like a breath test and juggle all of these bags and labels and stuff, it's very, uh, it's risky because the kid, your kid could come up and like grab one of the bags and run off or do something to it. So I decided I would just bring it all to my office and I would do it at my office. So I did and I drank the sugar, it was gross, and I was collecting the samples. And by the end of that test, I felt truly horrible, truly horrible. Like I was getting lightheaded and dizzy and woozy. Like if I stood up in between samples, and to go get something or go do something. I was getting really lightheaded. I was actually starting to get very scared because I was in my office alone. And, you know, my husband and my daughter were at home. I didn't have anybody else in the office with me. And I didn't know what was gonna happen if I passed out and I hit my head or something happened. So I had to be really careful and get up super slowly. Um, luckily, I knew exactly what was happening and I only had one more sample to go. So in between samples, I got up went to my little mini fridge in the other office, grabbed the breakfast that I packed with me to eat. And I brought it in my, into my room at my desk. And like the moment I got the bag away from my lips and I sealed up that sample, I was already eating, but it was so bad. This, this hypoglycemic dip was so bad for me that I actually had to cancel all my appointments for the rest of the day. I got into the office at like eight and I figured, oh, I'll do the glucose test and I'll be ready to go with appointments by like 11. So I had a whole, you know, late morning and afternoon scheduled for the day. And I had to ask my assistant to call all of those poor people and reschedule and postpone the appointments because my brain didn't function for the rest of the day. And I basically just laid on an air mattress in my back office, kind of napping and trying to recover for the rest of the day. So this is also something to know is that I had struggled with hypoglycemia on and off for a couple of years when I was healing my gut. But by the time I did this, I had actually not had any issues with hypoglycemia at all for quite some time. And I had gotten so good that I was able to do two or three day water only fasting with absolutely no food and I was not getting hypoglycemic. So I've known that this is a tendency for my body to dip a bit hypoglycemia uh, or hypoglycemic. It was, a, it was something that was very well under wraps, very under control for me for many years. And this test still put me through the ringer and really ruined the day. The other thing that happened to me, this is verging on TMI, but whatever, we're all friends here. Um, I got a wicked, wicked vaginal yeast infection the following day. Again, I had had some in the past. I had not had a vaginal yeast infection in 10 years. And I had not had any antibiotics. I hadn't changed my diet. I hadn't changed anything about anything other than I consumed an outrageous amount of glucose the day prior. So I am living proof that hypoglycemia and candida kind of stuff can absolutely go hangwire if you do a glucose breath test. So I would caution you against it and recommend that you go a different direction. And again, I'll, I'll point out really briefly, I'd had candida to some degree when I was healing my gut and I worked on it. Similar to the hypoglycemia though, I had not had an issue with candida overgrowth. Symptom wise, gut wise, vaginal, candida, thrush, nothing. And my oat tests had looked clean for a while at that point. I had not had any discernible candida problem in many years. And I still was able to induce a heck of a nasty vaginal yeast infection doing this test. So please be cautious, please skip the glucose test. If you have any question about hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia or candida overgrowth, it's not worth it. It's too risky and it'll make you feel like garbage. Um, and again, maybe you just skip it all together because SIBO testing just kind of stinks overall and it's not super accurate and not reliable. Or maybe you go a different direction and ask for lactulose instead. We'll cover that in future videos at some point, the accuracy issues between those two tests. But in the meantime, I hope this one saved you from a really rotten day or two as I experienced. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.